ladies and gentlemen, please welcome American University's 2013 Monk of the Year, Anderson Cooper. It's a great honor to be called Wonk of the Year, to be named Wonk of the Year. To, to know that former President Clinton was the Wonk last year, I certainly feel in good company. So it's, it's a great thrill and I'm really looking forward to, to meeting the students and talking with everybody. Thank you very much. It's really, uh, it's an honor to be here. I think there's something about our media today which, which doesn't encourage us to walk in other people's shoes. There's a lot of yelling on, on cable TV in particular but there's not a lot of listening. I do think it's something that a liberal arts education encourages you to do and that they encourage you to do here at AU, to, to walk in someone else's shoes and try to understand life from their perspective. And that's something I try to do uh, in my work all the time. And I was always surprised by what I found in sort of the darkest reaches of our planet where, where everything else is stripped away and raw. And you know, in wars you expect to see darkness, but, but what you also find is light. And you expect to see horror and hate, but you also find great acts of compassion and kindness. And it, 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 the thing I've learned in, from, from being a reporter now for more than 20 years is that all of these things are choices. How we choose to respond to events is, or how we respond to events is in fact a choice. And the choice is up to us. Whether we choose to act and commit great acts of compassion or kindness or, or, or terrible acts of, of barbarism and brutality. How do you think your intentions in journalism have evolved after seeing these kind of drastic circumstances? Honestly, the interviews that I find most satisfying, the ones I really think about and the people who stay with me are, are not famous people. They're, they're regular people who find themselves in circumstances beyond their control and are struggling to lead a good and a decent life. What I've found is that people want to tell you their stories. And even people who are in the midst of grief, even people who are going to die tomorrow, they want you to know their names and they want to tell you their stories and they want to talk to somebody who's actually listening. And if it feels natural to you to ask somebody very personal questions who's grieving, um, then I, I just don't think you should be that person, the one who asked. I think it should feel uncomfortable and it should feel awkward. What is your greatest hope for our generation? When you talk to people who have achieved success, however you define success, um, when they look back, it, there was no clear path to where they wanted to go. I do believe very much in being motivated by, by what gets your heart racing and what gets your adrenaline pumping in terms of making decisions. And, and I think you will find you take a step and then you take another step and then all of a sudden you realize, oh wait, I actually am on a path and, and this is a path and it is sort of leading somewhere. And if it's something that you feel very passionate about, it's, it's not going to feel like work and you're going to be able to work harder than anybody else. Let me, on behalf of all of us here in the Situation Room, congratulate American University for selecting my good friend Anderson Cooper as this year's Wonk of the Year.